I think that's us live now. So, um, folks, you're very welcome to this afternoon's Executive Office Committee meeting. Um, if we could begin with item one, which is the apologies. We have received an apology thus far from uh, the Vice Chair, Doug Beattie. Uh, any other apologies, uh, Clerk? No. No. So, hopefully, um, and Christopher will join us at some stage. Um, under uh, Chairman's business, just to update members um, that I met this morning with members from Rosetta Trust, and we detailed with them uh, a range of issues that they uh, have, um, specifically about the historical institutional abuse process, and especially that regarding the redress board. We discussed the issues that they have with the redress board, uh, some of the concerns that they have about payments, especially that have been made to those that live in England and the impact that it might have on them. And also, uh, we discussed a number uh, of the concerns that they have with just generally the approach that has been taken. Now, these issues were raised with us before. There are a number of recommendations that we kind of have felt that uh, could follow from today's meeting that include maybe the submission of a committee um, a committee motion to the assembly, uh, maybe asking for a review of, of the redress board, and that also maybe we would seek a meeting with the Secretary of State with regard to the impact of those that live in England um, by the uh, payment that they would receive as part of the process from here. We understand that there are remedies in place for Scotland and remedies in place for Wales, but that there aren't remedies in place for those that are in England and that this has been going on for too long, given that some people have already received payments and it may be impacting them. So there is a certain urgency to that. There is The meeting was literally finished at about half 11, quarter to 12 this morning there. So um, we're putting together... Uh, a slightly more detailed paper that has the recommendations that will circulate the members later in the week. And then hopefully next week we could take the recommendations from that and we might be able to move forward with, with that as well. Um, Martina? Uh, thanks for that update, Chair. Um, and I know speaking to some of the members of the group, uh, of different groups, that they would like a public session uh, with the committee. And I know we're going in to discuss the strategic um, work program going forward. So that's something that I think we need to do in advance of any motion that we would be bringing to the Assembly. And, um, definitely, um, I think we're, we're going to give prizes, Martina, there for being a good mind reader, because that's exactly what we discussed this morning. They did mention about wanting to come to the committee, and we thought that actually if we're going to do um, a motion to the Assembly, bringing them in a week, or maybe if it was a fortnight before that, to give us a flavour um, of the issues that they're facing and then being able to use that. So absolutely, that's, that's one of the recommendations as well. So um, that's good. Any other uh, questions or queries on that? Look, I appreciate that was a bit of a rattle through it, but it was only the, the about two hours ago, so uh, hopefully we'll have a more detailed report. And also maybe just to say we have, we have an apology in from the Deputy Chair uh, as he wasn't able to attend this afternoon for, for, for reasons, but he also wasn't able to attend that this morning, but did send his apologies, so um, they, they were conveyed as well. Um, also, members, there is a letter from the Committee for the Economy informing the Northern Ireland Affairs Committee uh, that it's a preferred future scrutiny of the Ireland-Northern Ireland Protocol is done through correspondence and not through informal meetings with the chairs. Um, we, we've, been do we've had about two meetings now with the chair of the uh, Northern Ireland Affairs Committee and a number of other uh, chairs from the assembly committees and I think it just they, they maybe it's a good idea but I just think it's maybe not working in its current format and um, certainly agree with what the um, economy committee chair is saying and think that maybe we we should look at some other um, method of doing that so um, that will just be we, we'll keep that going um, in the background and see what response there is uh, from the chair of the Northern Ireland Affairs Committee to the chair of the Economy Committee. Um, item three, then, is the draft minutes. Uh, the draft minutes of the meeting held on the 20th of April are at page six of the meeting pack. 
Um, are members content that that's a true reflection of the proceedings there? Okay. Uh, in terms of matters arising, uh, on page 15 of the pact, there was an invitation from the Eruptus Joint Committee on European Union Affairs. The committee have invited us to attend their meeting on Wednesday, the 12th of May at 9.30 a.m., and the meeting will be held virtually via the Teams flat platform. So if uh, members could let the clerk know if they're available for that, uh, we'll make sure that everybody gets all of the appropriate invitations. Um, and I would certainly urge us many members and hopefully as reflective of all the parties making up the committee that could get along to that because um, I'm very uh, very straightforward about this. We need to be in problem solving mode if we're going to solve problems. Simply highlighting problems isn't going to solve them and I think we solve them whenever we communicate with as many people as possible and in as many different places as possible. So this invite uh, I think would be an opportunity for us again to discuss the problems and the problem solving approach that we need to take. So um, if members could let the clerk know if they are uh, able to attend that will make sure you get all the information necessary for it. Is there any other items under matters arising that anybody would like to raise? Okay. Um, we jump in my notes to something I will, oh no, hold on here, we have to do this. Uh, the forward work program, so I said normally at the end of the meeting, so we have to do it at this stage. Um, on page 199 of the meeting pack is the forward work program. Um, one item that I would draw uh, to members' attention is um, that the SEUPB are doing, uh, are contributing as part of the consultation on the Peace Plus program. There was originally thought about that presentation from them being done to the Finance Committee. However, I think the Finance Committee are happy that that would be presented to ourselves, given that just they, you know, that it, it sort of sits with ourselves, being able to ask them, the executive ministers, to follow up any outcome from that. So, would members be happy enough if we get a presentation from them on the Peace Plus program? Okay, uh, then if members are happy to note the rest of the forward work plan and we can discuss it further when we're having our planning session at the end of this meeting. So we'll note that. Um, in terms of correspondence, uh, and the correspondence item 6.1 is regarding the statutory regulation 2021, um, which is the Department's Transfer of Functions Order. Uh, the committee will need to consider this SR, which is subject to affirmative resolution procedure. The SL1 was considered in October, and we were content at that stage, um, but it is intended to formally consider the statutory reg on the 19th of May. So um, could I get agreement that we write to the other statutory committees that are impacted by this SR to ask that they are content? Okay. Uh, yes, Martina? Uh, Chair, anything at all that we can do to accelerate this um, because we need this transfer of functions order. It's been going on for far too long and it's impacting on a number of reservoirs. I brought this up at the committee before. We're dealing with it in the infrastructure committee as well and we have engaged with the TEO. So whatever has to be done to accelerate it, I'd appreciate if that could be moved forward. Okay, so I think uh, the 19th is the, the so that's uh, two weeks away. So I think that is the soonest way, the first opportunity that we can get that on. So that's perfect. Okay, are members content to note the rest of the correspondence? Okay, so uh, any other business? I don't have anything. Is anybody anything else they wish to raise? Okay, so uh, I can say then that the date time uh, on place the next meeting will be via Starleaf this day next week at 2 p.m. But again, just before any members run for it, thinking that that's the end of the day, uh, we are simply adjourning from public session so that we can take a training session on effective questioning and then we can do our planning session uh, to look at what we want to look at for the year ahead and it's, it's you know perfectly uh, normal and routine for us to do that in private sessions so at that point we will conclude the public session of the meeting thank you very much indeed 30 this is the northern ireland assembly committee room 30.